we cannot discuss Nigeria without looking at security. And there are those who say security is a hydra-headed problem, ranging from issues to do with insurgency to kidnapping, the herdsman crisis, as well as communal clashes. The primary responsibility of government is the safety and security of lives and property. Well, how safe do you feel as a Nigerian in the country today? Well, to discuss this, uh, it might surprise you to learn, but you will soon find out why. Uh, joining us is uh, Dr. Obi Ezekwesili, the co-convener of the Bring Back Our Girls campaign. Thank you so much for your patience and for joining us. Thank you. And uh, also, Mr. Sheyi Adetayo is a former DSS operative in the Northeast. The reason for that will soon become obvious as well. And then, of course, you have Colonel Hassan Stan Labo. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Colonel Hassan Labo is our military analyst here on Channels. And then we are being joined from our Abuja studios uh, by Mr. Lawrence Alobi. He's a former commissioner <coughs> of police in charge of the Federal Capital Territory. Well, there he is. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. Now, let me, let me start from uh, Mr. Sosa Kwezili. Uh, the organization or the campaign that you've been running for the last couple of years sprang forth from a security lapse. The girls, both in Chibok and later on in Dapchi, were taken away because there was a major breakdown in the security architecture in that area. This is 2018. Is there anything you have seen in the interregnum that makes you believe that the situation is getting better or is different and that such incidents which led to the Bring Back Our Girls campaign will not happen in the near or distant future? Well, um, I think that the very succinct way to say it is um, the issues and um, manifestations of insecurity have sort of morphed into different dimensions. And so there is um, this sense that you cannot feel that with deaths in just, just a few days ago, that you can be making an assessment of uh, the state of security in the country merely on the basis of whether new, new girls or new people have been abducted, even though people recently reported other kinds of abductions in the north central um, region of the country. So what it means is that we need to look at security issues from a human security perspective. The human security approach at looking at security means that you're not simply looking at militaristic uh, definition of security alone. You're looking at the entirety of the social fabric of the society. If we don't have social cohesion, then the fabric of the society is very tender and tenuous. And so you would have conflicts. And how do we manage conflicts? If you don't have militaristic um, intelligence assets that enable you to be proactive and preventive, uh, uh, and preemptive of issues that you have to deal with in security, that you would have cases where deaths, people are killed, and you're wondering, how could they have been killed? Why was nobody aware of the fact that this kind of an assault would happen against our people? Um, if you don't have security being looked at from the larger perspective of security of livelihood, you just talked about the issues of social investment. And I think that the key point is that if you don't have productive citizens, it is going to be almost impossible for you to grow a society that is not as unequal as our society currently is. And therefore, the drivers of insecurity are very integral to the fact that you are not a productive environment. So what it therefore means is that expanding the conversation on insecurity in the way that it takes in all the topics that we're dealing with and 
remembering that the key issue in human security is a very connect the dot kind of approach and with a very important issue of who leads the process of defining how critical the security of citizens should be. The person who is the leader of a country also ends up as the commander in chief of the armed forces. He's also the one who coordinates the government activities in terms of ensuring that you have a stable society that is also a prosperous society. So if we are failing in dimensions where we do not have the kind of society that gives people a sense of stake in it, then we cannot simply isolate the fact that a little less of some of the incidents that we used to see are now happening. And my final point is that when you look at the militaristic, the, in other words, this, the security part of it where you're talking about the intelligence agency as well as the military establishment in entirety, you have to think of even the leadership and the processes and the accountability and the performance of those institutions, of, of those establishments. We, I, I, you know, our sense, and we've maintained that, is that there is something about our military architecture that needs to be looked into in a way of an operational review in order to improve the quality of the leadership of the military establishment. Today, there is no consequence for failure. So you can fail and you would get decorated. It shouldn't be so. The, part, the person who needs to define how important the life of the Nigerian is, consistent with the fact that he swore to the Constitution to do that, is the president of this country. Today, the life of the average Nigerian has been cheapened to the point where when you look at people having a conversation, they really are asking, how much is the Nigerian life worth? Mm -hmm. Now, if the Nigerian life is not worth anything below zero, anything higher than zero, which is that death can happen, and people are becoming normalized to death happening in our society, people are now no longer even within a minute to think of the fact that 14 people, you say 14 people are killed, and they say only. How can we build a society like this? There's something broken in that. And so this Mrs. broken... Mr. President, I'm, I'm going to have to put you on pause. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, and then ask Mr. Alobi in Abuja. Now, you, you were a police commissioner during a time of uh, significant trouble, the precursors to some of the things that we are now seeing. And you heard uh, Mrs. Ezekwezile refer to the fact that we have gotten to the stage now where it doesn't matter how many people get killed. People just say, oh, that many? All right. That's not as many as were killed yesterday or the day before yesterday. Now, since you left the force and became a civilian, I'm sure you yourself, you've seen some more of this. Because when you were in the force, you were probably surrounded by security. <laughs> now that's not quite the same anymore. Now, what's, what can you see on the outside looking in? about the issue of the architecture and how it can be operationally reviewed. I'm borrowing uh, Mrs. Ezequiel's phrase now, operationally reviewed. Yeah, thank you very much. You see, security, the importance of security is amplified by Section 14B of the Constitution, which says security and the well-being of the citizens shall be the prime purpose of government. And like, I don't agree with Obi who says that uh, life does not want anything in Nigeria. We value life in Nigeria. And that is why when any life is being threatened, when there is any security in any part of Nigeria, the police and other security agencies respond promptly to ensure the destruction is brought under control. So I think the security in this country is, a ch is very challenging. Internal security is the most challenging in, this, in Nigeria. Um, the constitution, which we, like uh, Professor Yobole said earlier, our constitution is a lacuna. There's, there's some limitations. Nigerian police force is the principal law enforcement agency that is charged with security of internal security. And we agree with that empirically, that the internal security has been more challenging than the external security of this country. 
But Section 217 of the Constitution provides for the, the, the role of the armed forces, provides that the armed forces shall be equipped and funded by the government and people of Nigeria so they can be effective and efficient in the performance of, the, performance of their duty. But that is not mentioned under Section 214, which, which establishes the Nigerian police force. It is silent. That the police is now like a, an, an orphan. He has nobody to take care of, the, take care of, care of, take care of his, his operational needs, his welfare needs, and other, other logistic needs. Then, yeah, the security today is it is technologically driven, it's in, in knowledge based, and intelligence, intelligence driven. And without adequate funding, there's no way the police can perform optimally. Um, you will agree with me that uh, in recent time we have seen where even the money that is even uh, the budget, the money that is budgeted for, is, they don't even have release even half of it. So what what would the police do? The police have staff of funds. They are under trained, under under equipped, under. Capacity, they lack capacity in terms of lack of training because they don't have the funds. They are not, the welfare is, is, is nothing to write home about. They are under-equipped and under-motivated. So these are all the factors that are contributed. Internal security is supposed to be the key and central, and the police are supposed to be the, the taproot of internal security, the principal law from agencies. Rather than empowering the police, rather than empowering them, given the necessary capacity and capability to perform effectively, and granted internal security of this country, the police is gradually, gradually being, 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 being brought down to, to, to its knees. The okay, police now is supposed Mr. to be the forefront of internal security is not the background.